Great day. My name is Rapunzel Williams, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. Please silence our cell phones and all electronic devices. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational religion and scientific research organization dedicated to showing the proof and existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operations of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry C. Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, Jamaica, Africa, New Mexico, and certain other foreign countries. The Omaha class meeting was established in the year of 2016. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit which can be contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word of Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of physical body is Yahshua, and it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that the Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name. But it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation of your part into any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, or the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabets that produce a sound that is made by the letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. So such names as Jesus and Jehovah are possible renderings of the true and original name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He's incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn a cloud all around the edges of this chart to show that how everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super and corporal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. And this form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given until salvation, and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question you should ask yourself is, what was the name of the Savior? During the time, he walked the earth plane. A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the prefix of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern of the universe because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision and it spoke to him to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, 
a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our ten primary constitutional aims of the Institute are as follows. One, to help you find your Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and how he actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah, without distinction of nationality, race, creed, caste, sex, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers laden in men. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern and practical cold science. Five, to escapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of ages. Seven, to avoid being deceived. To discern being a, to seven, to discern and being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operate a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to honestly contend for the coming salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby men can be saved, that saved the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of email glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We will start our class off today with the opening prayer which will be given by Dr. Stephon Williams and our scripture lesson for this day is Hebrews the 8th chapter and that will be read by myself, Dr. Rapunzel Williams. Let's we'll all remain seated for the opening prayer. I just say great day to everyone. Great day. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and give reverence and honor and uh, thanksgiving and thanks to our Heavenly Father Yahweh Elohim. Do a son, I say, the Yahshua Messiah, our brother and king. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we just thank you once again for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness and your faithfulness. Father, we thank you for waking us up this day. Clothes in our right mind, Father, that our spirit, soul, and body is focused on you. Father, we ask you decrease our outer man and increase our inner man. We ask that you strengthen us in our inner man, Father, so we'll be able to stand the wiles of the adversary and that, that we uh, we be clothed uh, with the whole armor of you. And Father, we ask, ask, this, ask this message that you have prepared for the foundation of the world, Father, that it be edifying, enlightening, and resurrecting, send sick souls back to life. So that soul can have a chance to receive eternal life now. In the precious kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. All the requests and blessings, Father, we ask the name, only begotten Son, only wise Elohim, my saving king and brother, Yahshua Messiah, with the class say. Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. I'll be reading for you this, this evening, uh, Hebrews, the um, eighth chapter, and I'll be reading that out of the Holy Name Bible, contained the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, clearly compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revived by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Corporation, repented by Yashua Promotions. That's Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. For every, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, Wherefore, it is of necessity that 
this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he was on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. See, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. But now has he obtained as more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if it was for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with it, he said, Behold the days coming Come, said Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. But it, but, but it's a, but excuse me, ten. But it is but, the covenant. But this. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Hebrews 10, 8 and 10. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be, and I, and I will be to them their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their righteous unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. Will I remember no more? In that he said, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and wax old is ready to vanish away. I just read for you Hebrews the 8th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. It's an honor and a pleasure to call on our speaker for this evening, Dr. Stephon Williams. Great day to everyone once again. Great day. Uh, we're going to continue on with part two of our uh, transcript Friday. Yes. This transcript is entitled Old and New Testament. We're actually given by Dr. Killing in March 1968 in Los Angeles, California. Once again, this is our uh, workshop. This is obviously Friday once again. And we have entitled our workshop on Fridays, Transcript Fridays, meaning we'll be reading transcripts in their entireties. But certain transcripts are very long, so, it, so each class is two hours, so sometimes it will take a transcript um, to read, uh, be two parts. Yes. So this is the finishing of the entire transcript. Yes. Once again, the transcript, transcript is entitled, Old and New Covenant. Okay. Old and New Covenant, we actually given by Dr. Kinley in March 1968 in Los Angeles, California. Let's continue on. Okay. says, now, who is Paul? Who is Peter? Who is Apollos? Was any of them crucified for you? Do you, do you see what is plain as the nose on your face 
Now these men that's ordained to this condemnation crept in unawares, not by works of righteousness. Now wait a minute. Now he said under the grace, which means that you didn't merit it at all. Nobody never earned no salvation. Nobody merit, merited it at all. Somebody says, well, don't tell me I paid my dues. Yes, but you didn't, you didn't merit nothing. Says, hmm. Somebody said, yes, I'm a candidate for baptism. It's coming up next Sunday. Somebody said, and I'm a can candidate for baptism. <laughs> and Billy, Billy Graham's running around telling people, just join any church of your own, of your own choice that he might get a great big audience when he comes around. He's got contracts with this one and that one and the other one and all the Christians toward him and get it gets as many suckers as they can. <laughs> he says they can go to their respective and and any one of them that joins belongs and so they can run them in. And then they go right up in the paper, here to go Sunday morning to the church of your choice. Now the church, that they are the congregation or the assembly, that is the body of Yahshua the Messiah. All right? Mm -hmm. It's not a physical building either. Right. See? This is Yahshua Messiah right here in glorified state. All right? Yes. He's the head of the assembly. He's the head of the true church of the true congregation. All right? Yes. Many members make up this body. It's just one assembly, one congregation, all right? Yes. And this is a spiritual congregation, not a, not, a, not a building on the corner. All right? It says, now how many messiahs are there? Now they turned the grace. They were ordained to the condemnation. That's their job. They all were. Now look, after all these common ordinances, circumcision, water baptism, and all this was nailed to the cross, which you have right here. Mm -hmm. The common ordinances, physical sacrifices, so forth and so on. He says right here, nailed to his cross. See? These arrows, he has nails at the end of these arrows, pointing to God's Messiah fulfilled. The calling of ordinances or the or the physical way of worshiping him now. Right. Okay, on the side of the cross, all right? Yes. It says circumcision, water baptism, and all of this was nailed to the cross, fulfilled and nailed to the cross. Then over here we're not practicing that old covenant, see? Over here we're not practicing that old covenant. Mm -hmm. We're in the kingdom of Yahweh, see the point? Now all of this back here was the just pointed to. This was natural, carnal, or pointed to him. Now when you get him, you got the whole thing. You're circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, see? He circumcised eight days after he was born. You got that? It says two. Mm -hmm. You have somebody say, well, Jesus was baptized and he was baptized in the water. If he if 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 he was baptized. I ain't no better than he was. They say if he was baptized, it's good enough for me. Isn't that right? And we have one in here saying, Philip joined, joined to the chariot. Stop the chariot, said. Here's water. And both Peter and the, and, and the Enoch, I mean the eunuch, excuse me, and both Philip and the, and the eunuch, he did too, went down in the water and Philip baptized the eunuch and went on his way rejoicing. But before he got to that, he went down there and he preached to all Samaria, preached to, preached to all Samaria, but nobody in Samaria got the Holy Spirit, not a one, <coughs> until Peter and John went down there. Well, if didn't nobody in Samaria get the Holy Spirit until Peter and John went down there, why would you think that the, that the, that, that the eunuch, after he was baptized out there, got the Holy Spirit? Don't see... Nothing where he met Peter and John, do you? He said he went on his way rejoicing. Now here's something else you didn't know about that. Now you have went back and looked about the, the eunuch in the law. 
That's the reason why we tell you to the law and to the testimony. If they don't speak according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Now that now that 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 eunuch, Paul was one of them too. He couldn't they they couldn't be admitted to the congregation with them back under the dispensation of the law. Somebody said, "Well, why? That's what that's what you ought to ask. Why? It's because the eunuch is not fertile." He don't have no offspring, no children, can't multiply. Now look, what business then has he got in there telling somebody else's kids what to do? He ain't got none of his own. And Yahweh said he, would, he was going to multiply, but he ain't done nothing. Get the point? So he wasn't admitted in there. What's in the prophets they wrote? 30, uh, 56 chapter Isaiah said they won't have no more. There used to be the Sabbath and all that. And all that time is gone. Said he was going to move that thing out of the way. And they wouldn't have to say no more that he was a dry tree. And he was going to give them a special elevated place in the congregation. And that's how Paul got in. He had to be out there with the Gentiles. That's the reason why he was up there with the Sanhedrin Council. But now when the Holy Spirit come in, now listen, he ain't got children after the flesh. He, here on this side of the cross, you got them after the Spirit. See, so here on this side of the cross, you got them after the Spirit. So then now Paul had none of them after the flesh, but, but looked at all of them after the Spirit. There he has multiplied in this dispensation, not born after the flesh, born after the Spirit. That's the reason why he called Timothy. He, his given son in the faith. That's why he called Titus his son in the faith. Well, I tell you. Now that's the difference between one dispensation and another. One is multi, not multiplication in the flesh. The other is multiplication in the spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, we have right here dispensation. The, the word dispensation on this chart. This is our age dispensation chart here. This third age post woman age with the dispensation of the flesh. This fourth age present kingdom age where I will reside is the dispensation of the spirit now, okay? Yes. In other words, this is the outer, this is inner, okay? This is outer, this is inner, okay? It says, and under the dispensation of the, of the law, the man that was wounded in his seed, his stones, he was not fertile, and therefore was not permitted in the congregation of the assembly. Now then, when Peter, when Philip would go down and meet this, this eunuch, and he preaches to him there that you didn't know nothing about what he was reading. And asked, and asked him about it, and Philip told him about it in the baptism of John, and he told him about the Holy Spirit, pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and now here's where he come in. And so the eunuch said, now, now, what hinders me? He, he said, if you believe with all your heart. So then he stopped the chariot. He went down there and baptized him, and the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. You get the point? Here is water, physical water. Now look, we're baptized with water. But he that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow a river of living water. This he spoke of the Spirit. Man sitting close to the recorder, man sitting close to the recorder microphone said, living water, living water, right. Now the devil. He can't see nothing but natural, see? The devil, he can't see nothing but natural, see? Mm -hmm. You see how this serpent right here? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a pictorial illustration or, or the character. See? See how he stops right here? Mm -hmm. You can see nothing but the flesh, right? All right? He 
see, now the devil, he can't see nothing but the natural. You know, the natural or the physical. Mm -hmm. The natural or the physical. He don't understand nothing. Somebody could turn around and say, see, see, no, he don't see. How's a blind, how's a blind man going to see? Certain men crept in unawares who were ordained to the con condemnation and turned with grace. Heaven was searched, the earth was searched, and no man was found worthy to open the books and, and to loose the seals. Then John said he wept much on the account of it, and then he looked again and he saw that, that lamb that is slain even before the foundation of the earth. Yahweh always make a preparation for, for a restoration and redemption before something happens. Now here somebody doesn't understand what it's all about as soon as somebody comes along and does something to them that they think ought to be done to them. They'll, they'll got, got used to saying like this, whatsoever a man saw it, that shall he also reap, meaning if you kill my dog, I'll kill your cat. He said, or Yahweh, kill your cat. If you do something to me, then Yahweh, I'm going to tell Yahweh on you. I really think he found out about it before either one of you say, child, I'm going to tell on you. I, and then some of them say, well, I'm going to get down here and pray for you and some of them that got it, got it up to the, said, I want you all in. want to start on their way on their way to heaven. Come on up here for today so we can pray for them. They're they're done beating you in the back and screaming and slobbering and spitting all around, telling you got to pray for me, child. There ain't nothing like that in your Bible. He didn't tell you to pray. <laughs> now look. Listen, let's make it clean. The spirit in you makes the intercession for you. But that man hasn't got the spirit in him, and he and you tell him to pray for you. They're down there beating him in the back and then got him up lying and said, How do you feel now? Yes, that's right now. We <laughs> laugh at these things now. He didn't tell nobody to pray for you. But what must I do? Repent. Not pray. Repent. Believe on the Savior, Yahshua. Then you don't worry about it. He didn't say believe on Henry. Didn't say believe on Pete. Didn't say believe on somebody else. Now listen, Yahweh only has. Listen at me now. I want you to know how big of a fool we are and how stupid we are. Well, let some cardinal or, some of, or one of these that's ordained to this condemnation come along and tell us that Yahweh sent him to preach the gospel in this latter day. And what your sister said that he, what your father said that God called him. Yes. <laughs> that one of the spirits that was <laughs> that crept in other ways that, that was ordained to the condemnation. <laughs> he said and he gets up and all these and he, and he gets up and all these natural things that will down on the devastation of the law He's got you bowing down to you, <laughs> see, crepping unaware. That's right. Now look, read it out of the Bible, too. Don't you think he ain't reading out of the Bible? He's reading out of the Bible. Turn over there in the seventh chapter of Matthew. He said, judge not. Joshua said it. Joshua said it. Who said it? said Joshua said And when he gets down telling you about what Joshua said, now here's what they don't see. None of these people back here they didn't have the Holy Spirit. See? Mm -hmm. talking about, you know, back under the biblical statement of the law. See, none, none of these people back here had the Holy Spirit. He says, now, the promise that Yahweh made to Abraham, it was poured out here. Joel said, Peter got up there and said, that this is what, that this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, prophesying that in the last day, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what did, did you do to merit it? Nothing. <laughs> see? That's, that's, that's Joel 2 and 28, see? Mm -hmm. That prophecy coming through Joel, the prophet, the true prophet Yahweh, third eight Pope Luke name, mm -hmm. prophesying what's going to come in, and I'll pour in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, Joel, see? Elohim inside of Joel. You listen? Yes. 
It says, and listen here, folks, and listen here, folks, this is, this is some more of the bad part. Now, this is bad. Not one of you is a Jew. You don't have no business starting there because of the things in there about keeping the Sabbath day. He ain't said nothing to you about washing no feet. He ain't said nothing to you about taking no Lord's suppers at no time. He hasn't said anything to you about the Feast of Pentecost, eating no lamb and bullock and offering up of no turtle dove and whatnot. But he, see, but he did say to them that, that done them, he said, come unto me, all you that labor, see? Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all you that labor. It was pretty stiff job getting some bullocks and things up in them, up in that mountain up, up in Mount Moriah. Okay? We have a pictorial stretching right here of Mount Moriah. Okay? <laughs> That's the reason why the money changers, they brought the cattle up there in the dove and they tied them right out there and, and the cattle could where it could eat, so you wouldn't have to go leading a bull up the side of the mountain. They established some money changers up there, profiteering, and they made his house a den of thieves. That's merchandise. Mm -hmm. They ain't got through with that yet. Here, when he overturned this, the money changer table saying something about it, and here you are up here paying somebody to, to get up here and to lie to you. Said, what are you going up, up here? The Lord says, he gives us, he that lendeth it unto the Lord, lend it to him, lend it to the Lord something. Now I'll tell you, it's, it's, said Paul, he went around and he took of a collection. They say, well, what did he do that for? For the poor saints, which is truly sons, mm -hmm. for the poor sons which was at Jerusalem. That's what I said, that's what I taught. I taught that. We got the basket. They pass in a it around the building. This one is mine. Have mercy. That's right. That's what they do. Passing the plate around. Now we got that for this. Then you, you'll find another one coming around. <laughs> That's what I did. Come on the building fund. That's right. Just pass a plate, a plate around, another plate around for the for the collection to give to give our visiting pastor, a visiting preacher. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 special uh, offering. A special <laughs> offering. Ain't that something? <laughs> he so said true. now. He said now. Now, got about everything you think you can get out of, you, you said, would you mind coming up here and offering <laughs> this to the Lord? Well, since he won't take it, I'll guess I'll take it. <laughs> That's what they're doing, right? That's what they're doing. When they say the Lord, yeah. you know, which is wrong, is right. the Lord, Lord truly means Lucifer or the devil. Right. Okay? So in the churches. Mm -hmm. He said, <laughs> he said, just the biggest fool you ever saw, paying it for it too, sweating and getting out <laughs> there, children going barefooted, no milk in the refrigerator, nothing there for, for his eating, and paying somebody to lie. Hypocrite preacher. It's a disgrace, a shame. You hear that? That's right. Now faith comes by hearing and that by the word of Yahweh. You hear the real genuine gospel preached and you believe as the apostle said or the jailer said. Remember I told you about that? When they were, Paul and Silas was in prison and they put him in there for preaching the gospel, for preaching in that name. Some of the name of Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. all right? And then the great earthquake occurred in the jail. He thought so, he thought everybody was gone and his life was in jeopardy. So then now he was starting to kill himself. And Paul said, do yourself no harm. We're here. The jailer said, now what must I do to be saved? That's a $64,000 question. Somebody said, well, I'll tell you what you can do. Come up here and give me your hand. He didn't mean that, that pocketbook. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean take it. Then you become a candidate for baptism, and then after you've done all they said do, then they got the nerve. This is the truth, Bishop. You know I'm telling you the truth about it, but that man is experienced in these things, 
Am I, am I telling you the truth, Dr. Williams? That's a fact. I taught in this school that after you get up there, after you get up there, after you done, done got baptized, you done got your feet washed, you done, you done eating, I don't know how many Lord's suppers for six months. You're on probation for six months, which means that after you, after you done got in, they still ain't got no confidence in you. Mm -hmm. You're going to see how you do for six months. Now, you know that's true. You're on trial, on probation for six months, getting you ready for, for a paid ministry. Now, where do you find that in the Bible? Just tell us any kind of junk. Now, all of these kind of things is cause of all of this riots and all of this mob fighting, all of these wars that are going on up here, all this tumult against the races and the nations and the secretary started in on first one thing and then another, just, just what I'm saying. A Republican and a Democrat and just anything, somebody come along and say, well, I'm a Mason. I'm an odd fella. I'm a this and I'm a that. I'm a black Muslim. I'm a, I'm a white supremacist. Just, just any and everything. You're gullible. Yes, and it sounds good, said, boy, you ought to take up for your race. And then you go right over here and tell Dr. Harris, boy, you ought to take up for your race. And then here you build and Dr. Harris got the police all over. <laughs> Do you see how stupid we are? That's the way the devil's got us going at, at all over the world, see. Now these things must come. They must come. Now somebody said the black people, they're the underprivileged people. That sounds pretty good, said you can't get no job nowhere. More of them on the relief now anywhere else. They have segregated their houses. They are isolated and all of them different kind of things. Now then, you go and pull up by the white man, I tell you. You look to the wrong fellow for salvation. Now what's the white man want to pull up by? Get the point? Now here we are standing right on the brink of the thing. Just before he goes to pull the curtain down. You listen to mm -hmm. You talking about the creation. Right. You got me mm -hmm. on the brink. See, it was, it was spoken in 1968. We're right on the brink. Just a repeat. See, the Democrats in, in the Republicans, yep. same, thing. same thing. You got me? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing changed. That's right. We're on the brink before Yahweh pulled the curtain down on creation. It's just like, and I have you to know that the black folks were the first to rule the world. The world, the dark people, Babylonians. That was one of the seven wonders of the world up there. Black folks, is that right, Dr. Harris? That's right. Is that right, Brother Williams? That's a fact, Doc. Do you know what happened to them? Yahweh overthrow them. You know what for? Idolatry, see? Same thing going on now. Mm -hmm. Now, when he was up and out, there is Israel taking captives against them. Here they come in, going to Babylon, taking captives. Had old Baal sitting up there on the wall. Had Nebo over there. See? Had Nebo over there. Those are idol gods up there on the wall. Nebuchadnezzar, he took the sacred vessel of the sanctuary. He was, oh, he was important, that boy, drinking wine out of the vessel of the sanctuary. And you know what happened? Then something wrote up there on the wall. Mene, Mene, TK, a Pharisee. Your kingdom is divided and given unto the Medes and Persians. Israel come in there. Look, everybody said, now you haven't seen nothing like this. Baal was an idol. See that Baal? Mm -hmm. Lord, see? Same one, right? Thanks. Idol. In fact, you put one over there on the wall. Is that the figure right there? Nebo's up there too. That's that top God. Israel come in there strutting on up down, and you you talk about march, freedom march out there in the streets in the parade. They march on in Babylon, Baal, an idol, an idol bowed, and the world never heard tell of an idol, idol bowed. Baal bowed down. Nebo stooped at the presence of Yahweh. Now, do you understand? But Yahweh overthrew it for idolatry. The reason why you're in, in the shady condition that you are in now is because you are dependent upon the wrong person. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. 
you're depending upon nationalities and races, and you're depending upon a dollar, see? You listening? Yes. Instead of depending upon Yahweh to deliver you. They didn't purchase their freedom out on a bond down here with no money. So you're talking about down here when children of Israel were down here enslaved to the to the uh to the uh to the Egyptians down here. Yes. They didn't purchase their freedom out of bondage down here with no money. Not a thing that was down in Egypt enslaved. They didn't purchase their freedom from Babylon with no no price. You can't put something in shekels and put your price. Now the Messiah was raised. For a man to resurrect, you were redeemed by the blood. Now let's say now let's just read that. There's no, there's no salvation in any other. He's talking about that's, uh, Acts 10 and Acts, uh, 10 and, Acts uh, 4 and 10, right? There's no salvation in any other. There's no salvation in Peter. There's no salvation in Paul. There's no salvation in, in, in Kenley. See how they go? Mm -hmm. There ain't no salvation in that man. He's the man to be saved. He's not the Savior. He but the individual to be saved. And now, in the conclusion, I'm sorry I took up all this time, but I can't just go. So, yes, will you let me? Yes, suffer, suffer it to be so. Now, look, I try to tell you now, Moses don't know nothing more about the creation. This is short than I do and you do. See? Mm -hmm. Plato, Aristotle, uh, Socrates, Spencer, Huxley, nobody. I almost got it all. Know nothing about it. Now he told him to build this tabernacle, see? So he told Moses to build the tabernacle. It's a replica of a show of the Moses by divine vision, by revelation, see? Yes. Yahweh, Yahweh, takes on shape and form of Yahweh Elohim, they transfigure into the threefold tabernacle, tabernacle. Yes. I mean, tabernacle <coughs> pattern, intangible, but Elohim himself is our entire original pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. He no, 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 Moses didn't know nothing about this until it was revealed to him by revealing himself, see? Yeah. Inside the man. It says now, but now listen to this. It says, um, Tabernacle he, he built up, but the greater and more perfect Tabernacle, the Tabernacle of the universe, see? see? The more perfect and more more perfect tabernacle is the entire universe itself. Mm -hmm. The universe itself is the tabernacle. The man man did not pitch that. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yahweh ever created the universe. And the universe is a tabernacle itself. Man can't do that, right? Right. He built himself. Never made no errors, never made no mistakes. And listen, all of all out of, all, out of all of your smart men, your scientific research, read anybody's scientific article in any up-to-date to magazine you want, you want to, and all, it is a proton, neutron, electron. See, we have it right here. A proton, a neutron, electron, that makes up an atom, is that right? Mm -hmm. Three parts to an atom, one atom, right? Right. So you got the Father, Yahweh, see? Got the Father Yahweh, Son Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit, which we want to unwords. You got Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. See? Yes. <clears throat> one Spirit, two manifestations, three states. One Spirit, the Father, the Word, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Yahweh, the Lord, and the Yahshua, these three are one. He said, now, here, here's my story, here's my story. This is what I'm trying to teach all of you here. Now, if they abstain from keeping this Passover and these ordinances, which they were told to do, it would still have been wrong. See how I go? Mm -hmm. See? 
the institution of Passover down here in Atlanta, Egypt. See? See, Passover feast. Right. It's still wrong on this side of the cross. Right. See? Lord's Supper is still wrong on this side of the cross. Okay? You see that now? But now, here's what they didn't see, and here's what they didn't understand. Now, in this dispensation over here, on this side of the cross, we don't eat none of that, see? On this side of the cross, see? We don't eat none of that. We don't eat carnally or physically now, right? Yeah. It says, we don't partake of none of the carnal ordinances. In other words, we are fasting, see? Total abstinence from food will not participate or indulge in any of it. A, a complete fast. In other words, we will not eat no Lord's Supper. See how I go? Mm -hmm. We will not partake of any of those carnal orders that that was on the other side of the cross, see? We're not doing this on this side of the cross now, you understand? Right. We're fasting from that, you understand? Yes. Staying away from it. Feel the way the works of my Creator on this side of the cross. Can do nothing for your soul. We will not partake of any of those cardinal ordinances that was on the other side of the cross. What do you mean? Do you mean that you won't eat no lamb, that you won't eat no beets? No. The fast that I'm talking about is you sitting down eating those things with, with a consciousness of obedience to the law. Here's a man's fasting. And look how fat some of these people around here running around seeing Dr. Harris for being about overweight, just as fat as they can be. Dr. Tell him. Doctor, tell them that you better take off some of that, some of that boy fasting. And he don't know nobody living, know no more about it than he. No, you don't know no more about it than me. And listen, that 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 means this. I don't have no, no boasting to do, no bragging to do at all. No, sir, no ma'am. I did not read up on it, and if it wasn't that Yahweh showed me, I wouldn't know no more about it than anybody else. You see, that leaves me without anything to boast about. Do you? Do you understand? And that's the way it is. Now, this work has been, as I told you, all around the colleges, right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about this divine vision by Revelation, being a pictorial illustration on these charts, right? Right? Listen. Yes, sir. These are these are pictorial illustrations. Okay. Yes. And these charts have been in all around every all the colleges all throughout the world as of now, and it is has actually gone all over the world. See this work, and nobody that has been able to dispute it. See how they go? Mm -hmm. Why? Because what you're doing, you are going by a pattern. When you started by when you start in your Bible, Genesis one and one. In the beginning, it says, in the King James Bible, we say God. Mm -hmm. But in reality, in, 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 in the Holy Name Bible, it's supposed to be the reality in the true, correct way it's supposed to say L on him. See? Yes. Everywhere you see, L, everywhere you see God in your King James Bible from, from Genesis to Malachi, it's supposed to be L on him. Everywhere you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D from Genesis to Malachi. Those four capital letters, of, those four <coughs> capital letters of that word Lord, mm -hmm. supposed to be Yahweh. You understand? Yeah. You get real close, you will see that it's been inserted. Mm -hmm. Yahweh El has been taken out. Yahweh has restored his name back in these Bibles. You understand? Yes. But it should truly read Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And see, so we have that right here, too. Keep the illustration, remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. See? First day, second day, third day, so forth and so on, right? Yes. Chaosis. But we're not on that right now. But we have it right here, keep the illustration. Okay? Okay. Let there be light, and there was light. The evening and the morning were the first day. See? Now you got a division there with light and darkness. Now, suppose I ask you, I'm 
and you're you're in the world. So Paul now asks you, why did Elohim do do it like that? Huh? Let me tell you something, boy. I ain't gonna. I'm not trying to meddle in in, in Yahweh's business. He don't know, and just instead of him just coming up there playing flat and saying, I don't know, won't do that, that would ruin his reputation. And I could ask him 1,000 questions and everything. For example, now the next day, the next day, what happened the next day, divide the water above from the water beneath. Why, huh? I can't, it don't make no difference to me. All I know is it says, it's Yahweh's holy word that he done it. That's right. We're going on down on the third day. On the third day of the creation, say, look, he said it down here, here that Yahweh divided the waters off of the waters off of the face of the earth, and the dry land appeared, and the seed of vegetation penetrated the soil. See. Once again, it's all right here. See what he's referring to. See? First day, second day. Third day, the pictorial illustration was taking place in Genesis, the first chapter, all right? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. It says, um, so it says down here that Yahweh divided water off of the, the water off of the face of the earth, and he let the dry land appear and the seed of vegetation penetrate the soil. Why he do that? Huh? He come right back. Same thing. He said that don't don't it. Listen, I believe what's written in the Holy Bible. He don't know one darn thing about it. Now you got a story there. Have you got this story now? Look at this one. Second Corinthians, uh, first, second chapter, first Corinthians. Listen here. Like the Jehovah Witnesses one time here, not too long ago, when I asked him how, when some of my brothers, children, now they're Jehovah Witnesses at all. Said, ain't nobody ever bear, ain't, no, ain't nobody ever been to heaven to come back and tell no, nobody about it. I said, well, you never read, you never, you're not too well read, are you? I said, hard to prove, Un Uncle Cliff, and you know it. The Bible says, when you haven't had any vision, you say, the Bible says, I have not seen. Ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man. We could tell you some of the names of the folks that did that, but he's reading the Bible and he don't know nothing. Suppose I say, a scientist say, tell me why an atom is composed of a proton, neutron, electron. Tell me why the hydrogen atom is only twofold. You say you believe in the Bible, you're supposed to be knowing something, so you know Yahweh. You see the point? Now, how are you going to convince somebody about something you don't know nothing about yourself, all right? Correct me there. But as it's written, I have not seen. I'll be now. I'm going to cut it up short. But the natural man, but the natural man is receiving not the things of the Spirit. He has never been born of God, but he's a natural man. Now, you can stand around and tell him all you want to believe what he's going to tell you, and this is what he's going to tell you. He don't know the difference between dispensation. He's going to tell you, well, Jesus said this. I'm not following Kenley. I'm following Jesus. Jesus said, Jesus said, judge not. 7th chapter, first, 11th chapter of Matthew said, Jesus said, judge not. For fear you may be judged. And you just turn right over to 6th chapter of the first Corinthians and, and you read, dare any, of you, dare any of you have a matter against one another? Go to law before the unjust. Don't you know that the sun shall judge the world? And are you not worthy to judge the smallest matter? That one down there you got in 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians, but the natural man received not the things. Now, he's not going to receive it when he's standing, when he's standing telling when he's standing there telling, trying, trying to tell Nick that he must be born again. He said, now how can a man enter the second time to his mother's womb and, and be born again? He's a natural man, head of the San, Sanhedrin, kind of one of the smart boys too. And he told him, said, just, just have to put it this way, just marvel not, got to be. 
you must be born again. Now, unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of Israel back there, you remember, we've talked about carnal ordinances. They can't see that. Now, look, when you look at a natural birth and a spiritual birth, a natural or carnal ordinances and a spiritual, he don't see. He don't see. It doesn't have none, no effect. All right, read. Now, watch it. Watch it. I'm, I'm not just reading this to have fun. Not the things of the spirit. For they are foolishness unto him. He's talking about a carnal minded man. Mm -hmm. You listen? Yes. Now you can say it's foolishness unto him unless you got something to give him on a plate. It's foolishness unto him unless you got something to give him to drink. You're foolish. Unless you got some water to put him in. It's foolishness. The natural man and a natural thing or the carnal orders and a carnal mind. And to be carnally minded is death. See how you go? Mm -hmm. It is to the Gentile, so says the apostle, all right, read, neither can he know them. Now look, you can just say, don't you see, and you and you see, Joe, now you're wasting your time. The man is blind. He can't see. He can't see why you are saying that. And the reason why we tell him in this school, there's no sense in you going out down there going out down here, down the street, and getting in the argument with somebody down there, and moving your job and creating all a lot of enemies out there in the street. See how you go? Mm -hmm. Just got to be careful on the employment. Mm -hmm. so, there just ain't no sense in that. Now, there's a time and a place, see? There's a time and place for all that. Mm -hmm. See how you go? And y'all always set that thing up, too. In Ecclesiastes, it, it says a time to be born, the time to die, the time to speak, and the time to, to keep your mouth shut. There's a time to get and a time to lose. Now, from as long as you've been going to this school, it's time, it's time you learn something. With all the experience that you had out there, talking to these people around here, it's time you learn that the natural man there, he's not going to receive the things of the Spirit because you talk like a fool. All right, read on. Because they are spiritually. You have to have the spirit to discern what we're talking about. You see how I go? Mm -hmm. All right, read. Because they are spiritually discerned. Now that's what that that's that's how you discern that. Now if they had the spirit, it wouldn't be no problem. But they don't have the spirit, and they ain't got nothing to discern it with. Read. But he that is spiritual. Oh 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 oh! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Now, I want you to read Matthew 7 and 1 and put it together. Judge not that you be not judged. For with that, what judgment you meet. Now, look. There was no, not a one. Now, now look there. Are you listening? You sure you're listening? The high priest himself, you read there in Hebrew, the high priest. When he went in here, he had to offer first for his own errors and in no position to offer them up, sacrifice for nobody else. He had to offer for his own errors and then for the errors of the people. Now here we are. Now we're referring to back under the law mm -hmm. when the high priest was officiating his tabernacle here, right? On the day of atonement. All right? Yes. He had to offer he had to clean the sanctuary all for the people all for himself. You see how I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. They told me. That they fulfilled though. The Yahweh side of that. The true high priest. It says it says he had to offer for his own errors and then for the errors of the people. Now here we are. But he that is spiritual. Now, 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 you said, Jesus said. Now, there's always somebody saying, Jesus said. He did say it, but that was in the dispensation of the law. I mean, truly, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Jesus is erroneous, man. Right. But I understand why he's saying that. Though. Now, 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 you said, Yahshua said. Now, there's always somebody saying, Yahshua said. that He did say it, but that was in the dispensation of the law. Did they, have, they didn't have nothing to judge nobody with. And listen, if you don't have the Holy Spirit now, you haven't got nothing to judge nobody with, and you don't know what's going on. And that's what's making people 
say they disagree. All right? Read. Now, get this one. But he that is spiritual, but he that is spiritual, judge all things. He that is spiritual, the man that's got the spirit judges everything, everybody you, everything you can think, every, everything you can do. I ain't going to put you in no water, Jimmy. I ain't going to give you no crackers and grape juice and wash your own, and, and you wash your own dirty feet. Now, of course, if you were disabled or something, other like that, I might, I might, I might try to help you out. I'm talking about salvation now. We were washed from our sins in his, in his blood, see? We were washed from our sins in his blood. Mm -hmm. Not washed from our sins by him getting water baptized by John okay. to fulfill water baptism, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what Christianity picked that up, you mm -hmm. got me? Going to start that up on the side of the cross, say that Jesus Jesus did it, so we do it over here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Ain't reading, ain't nothing been revealed to them. Like he said, a natural, carnal minded man with a satanic spirit inside of him. You got me? Mm -hmm. Paul the actual really good leader. He says, We were washed from our sin in his blood, the washing of regeneration. It's not by works of righteousness. That's Titus 3 and 5. I told you to read it a while ago. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. You running around here trying to merit salvation. And somebody is stupid enough to think that they can purchase salvation with a few bucks. Praise somebody out of purgatory. And what they do in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, Yahweh blesses the cheerful giver. I ain't going to give you nothing for lying to me. <laughs> and the truth about it is you ought to have that took away from you because you ain't nothing but a robber. That's right, robbing a man of his money and then robbing him of his, of his soul and top of it. You listen That's right. I'm telling you now. Yahweh, Yahweh is testing you on this thing that just happened to your to be daddy, biologically speaking. You listen? Yes. It's a test for you to, 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 to stand firm in the thing that y'all have revealed to you to these carnal natural people that, that you're going to be around. Yes. You listen? Yes. Tell the truth. Yes. He said, that's right. Robbing, a, robbing, his, robbing a man of his money and then robbing him of his, of his soul on top of it. Why do you think he shut his mouth for all of you? You listen? Yes. You're not speaking the truth to my people. And I got to shut your mouth. You listening? Yes. You may rob them of their money, and you may rob them of their soul. Now we're not playing. Do you see why I got up here? Now this is the this is kind of preaching I've done back yonder, and I just got in all, all kinds of trouble. They don't allow them kind of preachers around. That's why we got this school. See how I go? Mm -hmm. This school never would have been if they let us go out here in, in these schools, out here in these churches and preach it. And listen, I don't want nobody to think any more of me than that, that they see me to be. But he that is spiritual, see, judges all things. Do you see it now? And listen, and another thing too, let me say this, folks. You can't fool nobody. There's always somebody trying to tell you just, I don't see what you're talking about. This is the way I believe. Every last one of them, of Yahweh's people, every son, every daughter. In fact, when Saul was asked about it, is Messiah divided? Said, "Well, all he's not divided. We're all the ministers of Him." See. Now, said, "No problem at all for for us to, to agree." But in Babylon, the 17th to 18th chapter of Revelation, confusion. Mm -hmm. Look, the reason why. <coughs> Excuse me. We can't, we can't get straight down on how to carry on on ahead. You got a form of Elohimness, a wrong or, or wrongfully a form of godliness, but truly Elohimness. You got a form of Elohimness, but you deny the power. Now look, folks. I'm going to try. I'm going to put this up here one more time. Now, you heard me said I I I I'm I'm in that body. 
You know I'm good about sitting up in this, that seat when time is up. Here you got a pattern. You got blood, water, spirit. You got a pattern. Do you see it? Yes. You got blood on the altar, water in the labor, oil, or oil synonymous or, or, or a type of shadow spirit. Okay? Yes. Blood, water, spirit. Somebody said, well, I don't see no water there. It certainly is. Yahweh told him that he was going to come out there. Said, it's one of, the, of thy face shall, shall thou eat bread until you return unto the ground. Right? Mm -hmm. So you understand that that was put on put on the uh, 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 Adam yes. uh, working, right? It says, sweat, sweat of his face. Mm -hmm. So I go by here on the transgression plate here. Okay, that's water. Okay? Yes. Alright, the same location where the labor is. See how you go? Don't we sweat today when we work? Don't yes. work out or just get hot? Mm -hmm. See, like that water. Tight. See? We have tears flow out of the eyes like water. Tight, right? Physically, yes. right? It said now. Say in, in 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 the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread until thou return to the ground. Now look, all these things have to be fulfilled. Now Yahshua was out there in the garden of the city. He's out there praying. Great drop that that night before he crucified. Great drop of sweat fulfilling out fulfilling him out there. God to have to have him happy. Blood and sweat of his face, and then he went out went on from there on up to. Um, uh, Caiaphas held drug backwards and forwards and then he was lashed beat all that night just sweating in the sweat of his face till he was would be turned to the ground so they took him down off the top and laid him in Joseph's new tomb see and we had a pictorial illustration which is a good one right here see took him off the cross and laid in Joseph's new tomb here, see? Right. And then you look at it now, not knowing about the purple, look, Adam driven out here, world, see? Back to here, Adam driven out. Mm -hmm. He said, here's the Messiah prophecy. Behold, you despise one and I'll work a work. I'll work a work in your day that you will not believe. Though a man declared unto you, that's, that's uh, Habakkuk, the first chapter, fifth verse. See? And it is not my works of righteousness which we have done, but it's according to his mercy that he saved and Yahshua Messiah died out there on the cross. So said the book, while they were yet sinners. And listen, he wasn't just hanging out there on the cross, dying out there like a lot of people think. He said, he threw the eternal spirit. That was the eternal spirit that was in that body. Is that something? Mm -hmm. See? That was the eternal spirit, see? In that body, see? That was the eternal spirit that was in that body. It was, through the, it was through the eternal spirit that he offered himself without, or without sin. Lo, I come in the body of the book. Listen at me, Farley. As it is written, it's back to Moses and the prophet. Listen, I don't mean, listen, I don't mean here's what happened with him in the body of the book. As it is written of him to do thy will, O Yahweh. And, and he listened. Watch it now. Somebody always talking about a lot of Lost books of the Bible. You remember that, Farley? See, lost books, some of them, they ought to throw away. They're corrupt. Want to talk about the Quran? See? Want to talk about the book of Yasher? But now he comes. Now, he said, how could he say to the Jews, how could he say it, search the scripture if they were lost? He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, if they were lost, I come. 
want to fulfill every jot and every tittle except that which is lost known. See? The volume of the book. Right? Mm -hmm. It came in the volume of the book. See? Instituting and fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Meaning coming in as coming coming as Josh inside, but also took on took on took on a, 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 a took on a physical body as Joshua, old Shia. Mm -hmm. You got me? Or Yasha said another, see. He said, you look at it. You believe on me as the scripture has said, and then some idiot comes along and says, Well, Buddha's a oyster, spit knows the soul cracks, then got the guts and nerve to come over on this side of the cross. The script is done, been fulfilled, and all that, and all, and talk about the Quran, which is nothing but corruption. Listen, yes. listen, folks. I want Allah, see, and all that different type of stuff. The Quran is corrupt. Listen, folks, let me say this to you. All that's going to ever be written. For our divine inspiration has been revealed and fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And here it is right here. John writes in the revelation that he got. And there isn't anybody going to come along down here with any different story than what Moses and the prophets come along with. See that? That's right. If he did, he's a liar. And they're coming now saying, well, <laughs> listen to this. Well, God sent me the lab they to straighten the world out. <laughs> to establish a universal uh you you utopia upon the earth. Mm -hmm. and here he and here he don't know straight up. You see, yeah, he don't know nothing. You ask him a question just like we, just like he said, just he said. You ask him a question just like we, just ask why did Yahweh divide the water with bugs from the water beneath? Why did he on the, why did why he get on the third day? Why this and why that? Look here, it's black dark. It's black dark down here in Egypt. See, it's black, dark down here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so it goes back to the, it, and so it goes, and so it, it's got to go, it, and so it's got to be black, dark. This is the beginning of the migration, and now then on the earth up there, it's got to be, it's got to be the beginning. Yes, it's that way, dark down there three days. Now we got one. That he didn't die out there on the cross. No, Yahweh never died out there on the cross. The Spirit, we told you, it was through the eternal Spirit. He bowed his head in the lock of his shoulders and gave the Spirit. We told you that it was through the eternal Spirit. See? He bowed his head in the lock of his shoulders and gave up the Spirit. The body was dead, dead as it could be. Yahweh, you just read over there without controversy, great the message of Elohim this Yahweh, see? see? Yahweh, see? Was manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. See? See them angels believe in the world, preach them to the Gentiles and receive them to glory, see? That's what we know. That's what, that's what, that's what had been revealed to us. See? And some idiots think They got some kind of a death burial pass or a plot. Said he said he give him something to bring him in and help the subconscious state. Now that if it was that way, deception, then there ain't nothing to there there ain't nothing to none of it. No. He gave the spirit out there in the flesh was dead out there on the cross. Yahweh is spirit. See? And it was the spirit. He calls that body to be. What is matter? Matter is spirit materialized. See, your soul incorporation, a spiritualization of your inner man, which is Yahweh himself. See how you go? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful stuff, ain't it? Yes. All right, that's a real love, see? See? See, matter is spirit materialization, see? Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Read that again. So Yahweh is spirit, and it was the spirit. He called the body to be. What is matter? Matter is spirit materialized, your soul, incorporalization, and spiritualization of your inner man, which is Yahweh himself. See? You see how that goes? Mm -hmm. It says incorporeal. Yeah. Is that something? Yes. See? This is us. 
manifest in the flesh. Now we got to go back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the true us is the inner man. See? Right here on this chart here, you're going to just go. Just zoom in. It says the egotistical misdirected personality. See? Law of the spirit, tabernacle, signs of mind. Over here is, is, is the outer man. Okay? Or the carnal minded man. You listening? Yes. Carnal, the outer man. Carnality, changeable, morals, temporal, corruptible, mortality, theory. So I want to give you I want to give you his theory, right. his concept, his opinion. Yes. Right? right? Image, flesh, death, sight, touch, sound, taste, smell. This is the real you. See? It's made in the light of Yahweh Elohim. You listening? Yes. Spirituality, immutable, righteousness, eternal, incorruptible, immortality, proof, see, precept, see, truth. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, eternal glorification versus eternal damnation. You listening? Yes. So we'll be dealing with it on a daily basis. You got me? Yes. See? You said, what is matter? Matter is spirit materialized, your soul, incorporalization and spiritualization of your inner man with the Yahweh himself. You listen to that. Yes. Listen, it is in him we live and we have, we move and we have our being. Believe it or not, Billy, that's the way it is, Said There's another thing, too. Billy said, we are going to think that the, that the, um, the carnal nature, or, or King James Bible will say Godhead, mm -hmm. okay, or the truth of carnal nature, meaning, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go well, right here. See? Embodiment. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. With allowing divine attributes to take us in the form, right? Right. See? This is what the world calls the God here. It's the truest of all nature. Alright? See, we ought not to think that this corn nature is like wood, gold and all. Listen, let me tell you something. You've got a great big monumental structure out there and your chest all stuck out talking about the church I got down on the corner. And all our regalia. And we're all, Mr. Roman Catholic is something to look at, boy. Billions upon top of billions of dollars of gold silver, with every precious thing that they could ever gather up in the church. Just like old Pharaoh did down here, see, just like old Pharaoh <laughs> did down here. So you know what I'm repeat, right? Right, right. And now they built up these great big monumental structures which cost millions of dollars. Then when you go through it all through then when you go through with it, you look over there in the seventeenth chapter of Acts Apostle, look back there in, in Kings and see what Solomon said when he went to the de dedicate the temple. One that Yahweh gave the Actual divine specification. See how I go? Mm -hmm. You telling your sister or somebody? Yes. 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 See, Yahweh only told man to build him three things: the existence of, of of the history of mankind, right? Right. See, the ark. Yes. The tabernacle. Yes. And the temple. Yes. By by divine specifications. Okay. Yes. He says, um, he says, look back over there in Kings and see what Solomon said when he went to dedicate the temple. One that Yahweh gave the actual divine, see, specification and instruction to Solomon up there, David, and then Solomon built it. When, when Solomon got out there and dedicated to Yahweh, he said, look, the heavens are heavens, see. <laughs> he said earlier, there's three heavens. <laughs> First heaven, second heaven, third heaven, see. We have to the question right here. See, it says first heaven here. Right here it says second heaven. And quite naturally, there are three plates, there got to be a third heaven. And heaven is not a geographical location. You listen? Yes. You can be you, you can be in, in, in heaven right now. Okay? Before your spirit or your soul come out the physical body. You listen? Yes. Not not later on. It's too late then, you got me? Right. It's a state, not a place. Paul said, I knew a man that above 14 years ago that was exalted up to the third heaven. 
See why he walked around alive in a physical body. Mm -hmm. Listen. He was in heaven, the third heaven. You listening? Yes. Our father was caught to the third heaven. Moses was caught to the third heaven. John was caught to the third heaven. Guess what? You must be caught to the third heaven also. You listen? Yes. To understand the reality and the divine authenticity of your creator, how he truly how he actually exists. But you can't give yourself a divine vision. And you can't give yourself a divine revelation. You got me? Right. He must do it. If he chose to do that. You listen? Yes. You can call to the third heaven also. See? Paul said, I knew a man that above 14 years ago that was all up to the third heaven and heard things impossible for a man to, to utter. Now here Solomon saying that the heavens of heaven cannot contain thee to say nothing about this house that I have built out there on Mount Moriah. See? You listening? Yes. See, the church building with the satanic spirit incarnated in, in, their, in their preachers, so that's, that's God's house, mm -hmm. or only, or Yahweh's house, that building cannot contain Yahweh. Ain't that something? Yes. The universe can't contain Yahweh. Ain't that mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. The universe is in Yahweh. Right. Yahweh's not in the universe. Right. The universe is inside Yahweh. Now, I think it's the universe. Is it? Yes. Can you build that? No. Can you build a structure for the universe? No. <laughs> can't do it, can you? Ain't that something? Well, I tell you, it's been lied to all our lives, man. The wise we have to be so thankful and grateful and, and thank Yahweh so much for delivering from the power of darkness, right? That's right. Huh? Yes. All them lies. Now here Solomon is saying, it's, he said, the heavens of heaven cannot contain me to say nothing about this house that I have built out here on Mount Moriah. Paul looking at it and, and talking to the Grecian philosophy, he said, you, you ought to think that, that, that Yahweh dwells in temples made by man's hands. Oh boy, ain't that something just talking about these great monumental structures yeah. that they built up there and their church that down there on the corner. Mm -hmm. And the choir all rolled out, <laughs> and all the different, and all the different kinds of things, and how beautiful it is, and how beautiful, and how wonderful they can sing and play the piano and the organ and pipe and, and the pipe organ. And then some of the congregation people forget about the piano and the organ, going on up to the pipe organ. Said, "Sure as heaven." <laughs> Said, "Don't you want to join our church?" <coughs> And we talk about some little old cabin sitting over yonder, over across the, in your room somewhere. Now that, those temples is torn down. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? See? See? You want it in there. You want it in there. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? See? Your body is a building that Yahweh dwells in. Ain't that something? Yes. Not that church in the corner. That you lock up. See? Right. You gotta go see God, wrongly called, in, in three days a week. <laughs> you lock the door and you come out and, and you, you, you got me? Mm -hmm. and he's not he, he's 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 apart from you. Ain't that something? Yes. The lying bastards. Which was, was ordained to creep in under, under that condemnation, right? Right. He said now. Don't you know that you're buying the temple of the Holy Spirit and that Yahweh dwell in you? You are the temple. Oh boy. When you begin to, and men who search around in those, in these atoms and, and molecules and cells and, and these kind of things that makes up makes me up here, David looked at it and said, See, said, gee, he sure is wonderful. Man, man is man is wonderfully made. Doctor got a little glimpse. Run down and said, "Look here, slip out, slip out your tongue, boy, and let me see what's the matter with you here." Said, uh, uh, "I'm stuck." See, said, "Heart beating seventy times a minute." See, see, said, "What's happening, Doc? What's happening, Doc? Don't don't know. He don't see. He don't see that the man lived nine hundred thirty years." Died seventy years short of a, of a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. Seventy weeks is determined upon him. They don't understand nothing about it. I'm sorry. Student body claps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
If you got anything out this uh, part two of this of our transcript Friday transcript entitled Old and New Testament, let's give my Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in Los Angeles, California, in 1968. That will include another transcript Friday. If you got anything out this class lecture, all praise and honor, glory belongs to Yahweh Elohim through our Savior and His Son Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 I truly enjoyed that transcript. Yes. Finishing, finishing up that. That was, that was powerful, beautiful, and everything else you want to ask. For. <laughs> everything else uh, uh, you can ask for. Right. Uh, Father, we thank you so much. We're thankful and grateful uh, for you live, for you, for you deliver us from the power of darkness. I tell you. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, praise God, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hold classes here in Omaha class meetings in, in, here in Omaha, Nebraska on Fridays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, our class times, uh, excuse me, if you like, if you like to contact us and attend a class here and to uh, to sup and to study with the brother here in Omaha, Nebraska. You can, you can email us. Our email address is yashua47 at gmail.com. Once again, yashua spelled Y-A-H-S-H-U-A 47 at gmail.com. Leave us a detailed email concerning the date and time that you'd like to come and study with us. For fuller contact information, you can dial us by phone. For dial for Dr. Stephon Williams, area code 402-973-8987. Or for Dr. Rapunzel Williams, area code 402-609-6588. Either way, leave a detailed email or voicemail concerning the day and time that you'd like to come and study with us. And also, we, we upload our videos at every class. You can find our videos. You go to YouTube search, put an IDM, IDMR Omaha or Omaha class meetings. And ask Yahshua the Messiah to lead, direct, and guide you to the video that is already have prepared for you to watch before the foundation of the world. And last but not least, let us all stand for the doxology. Our doxology can be found in your King James Version of one's Bible, under the book of Jude, spelled J-U-D-E, verse 24 and verse 25, also in the Holy Name Bible, under the book of Judah, spelled J-U-D-A-H, same verses, Verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you following and, and to present you follow for the presence of the glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua Messiah our sovereign, is long in glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.